Now, before we get into the clothes, I want you to realize that I just showed you guys how versatile raised beds are. We put these in last year for pollinators and growing the flowers and everything with one layer, one level on the raised beds, we found that some of the plants didn't really root as well as we wanted them to. And so we're gonna make them a little deeper so those roots can really go down in there. Cause we plant uh, flowers and stuff in there that are gonna come back every year so we don't have to worry about it. The problem is, is when it's too shallow, they don't really get healthy and they, you know, a lot of them die off. So this is gonna make it a lot easier. It kind of looks cool too. So if you have not um, downloaded the PDF for the chicken coop, it's totally free. I'll leave a link in the first comment of this video. You might wanna go do that and just, uh, we were suggesting to you guys that you make a binder of all this information. It's totally free and all you have to do is go register and, and get the download and then you can keep, um, every month we're gonna do one and you can keep a binder with all this information in it so when you're ready or if you have a question or you want your husband or, or your wife or somebody to do a project, then you can just stick them on the notebook and then they can get out there and get it done. So if you registered for the PDF for the chicken coop, you'll automatically receive the new PDF, which is going to be about how to build a raised bed. It's going to have parts, instructions, materials list, everything like that. And it's super easy. Everyone got a lot of good feedback on the last PDF on how easy it was. A lot of people already made them and sent us their pictures and everything. So awesome for you on that. So if you didn't sign up for that one, go sign up for that one by the end of the month, so then you'll be automatically um, in there for every month that we send them out. And if you didn't do it, I mean, you only have a couple more days, maybe you're watching this video later, just go ahead and uh, click the link um, about the raised beds in a future video that's coming up. You might have to hunt it down, but if you do that, then you'll get them every single month. So what we're gonna talk about right now real quick, we had a really bad day today, it's a lot of rain. Um, a lot of overcast, as you can tell in the video. No drones today for you. Um, the sheep are doing fantastic on the other paddock. I mean, they're out there. We have boulders and stuff in every paddock so they can jump on them. And it's really fun to watch them uh, get out there and explore their new territories. And they're really all fat and happy over there. And actually, Mr. Turkey and Mrs. Turkey are doing really well with them. Uh, they've actually, Mr. Turkey got off the fence line now because those animals are in his paddock. And he's just kind of hanging out, walking around, and getting some eats and and uh, you know just kind of doing his thing so everything's working really good with that and I'll show you that in a video coming up pretty soon here so what I want to talk to you guys about is one of my most asked questions are you Amish and why do you dress like that and the answer to that question is quite frankly, no, I'm not Amish and I'm not Mennonite or play one on YouTube or Facebook or anywhere else. Basically, when my wife and I left the city life, we came out here to live a very simple life. We wanted to slow down and we wanted to just grow our own food, be left alone, and really just kind of really enjoy the second half of our life, right? My wife and I were in our 50s. So one of the um, things that we were looking into were like, fabrics and uh, blended stuff. Um, you got your polyesters, you got all these man-made chemicals that they're making clothes out of, and that stuff's on your skin all day long. So we made this commitment that we were gonna use like 100% cotton, and we were gonna use clothes that were basically natural and get away from like chemical stuff, because one of the main reasons that we came out here as well was to live a more healthy and sustainable lifestyle. Hope you guys are following along on that build too. That's gonna be pretty neat. It's a solar-powered workshop. I'm gonna have a tinker shop right there and it's going to be all solar powered and a lot of neat things are going to be put into that building it's also going to be our learning center where we're going to bring people to our property we're going to have classes and we're going to teach you guys about living a sustainable life um maybe have some boot camps on health and nutrition and stuff like that but back to the clothes so we made this decision also that we were going to limit the amount of money that we spend outside of our neighborhood and our property and our area, which would mean cutting back on things like Walmart and uh, big box stores, Macy's and all the stuff where we were buying all of our clothes in the first place. Um, you know, 
Levi's and Polo and Nautica and you know just all that stuff that people get we had all that stuff and Nikes and you know just whatever so we decided to cut way back on that stuff and be more intentional with our money so when we moved to this area we actually found out that there was an Amish community close by I was friends with them, um, started learning some of their ways. And then I asked them, I said, you know, I'd really like to keep my money right here in my neighborhood. And I like to be able to get 100% cotton and have a shirt made for me. And I would like to give you that money instead of spending that money at Walmart or any of these other big box stores. And they re that really resonated with them. And also a lot of the ladies in the Amish community, they work from home. So that was another big plus. They were able to get some income on the side and then make my clothes. And I love them, they're super functional, they're easy to wear, they're durable. I'm in these clothes, you guys have maybe, if you've been around here for a while, you've seen I'm really hard on my stuff. I mean, I'm out working all the time and these clothes are really lasting me a good long while. So basically I had to make my first couple of outfits. I started wearing these clothes, doing work here on the homestead. I had just built the log cabin. I was starting some other buildings and I felt really good about keeping my money in my community. So after that, um, a friend of ours saw what we were doing out here and he was like, man, you guys should really be posting videos on YouTube and that could really help a lot of people. And I was like, YouTube, I never even heard of it. And I'd already built the cabin. That's why there's not much video of us building the cabin. Now I do have some still shots and, and some pictures that we took while we were building it. So what I'm working on right now for you guys is a video. I'm trying to do the best I can to round up all of our pictures. We really weren't into that kind of stuff then. And I'm gonna try to put a video together on how I actually built this log cabin in 90 days pretty much by myself. We did have some friends come up occasionally to help, uh, but the most of the build was totally done by myself and with no carpentry skills. So I hope that gives you guys hope if you're thinking about living this kind of lifestyle as well, <laughs> that you can actually get out and learn things. You know, we've been here eight years and my skill level has improved a hundred percent. So I just want to encourage you guys about that. So I started wearing the clothes and they're super functional and everything else. And I, I just really enjoyed it. So I never went back. So I have some blue jeans upstairs, you know, there's your typical Levi's that you guys probably wear, and I just don't wear them. These are just way more functional and comfortable for me, and I, I just, like I said, I really believe in employing my community and keeping my money as close to my house as I can. Some of the times I hear about, you know, Bozo or Bozois or whatever his name is who owns Amazon, or even Walmart, you guys are like, oh, the big box stores put the small man out of business. I hate to kind of bring it to you guys, but you're responsible for that, not the big box stores. When you're intentional with your dollars, you continue to shop at those small family stores and those small family stores can stay in business. I mean, they never really relied on a global economy. They relied on their community. But what happens is for convenience and a little more selection and maybe the price is a little bit cheaper, you guys migrate to the big box stores and then that leaves the home man high and dry and then he has to claim close up shop and then everyone points the finger at Walmart and and uh, I could go on about this and if this is in a lot of different areas of life this is how it is so guys be intentional with your dollars and you know don't blame companies who want to start up and make money blame yourself because you're the one not being intentional with your dollars okay there's my soapbox for the moment so anyways, uh, that's why I wear Amish clothes. And I'll also remind you guys that if you ever stop an Amish person and you talk to them for a little bit and you question them about their clothes, to an Amish person or a Mennonite, their clothes are, are not their religious beliefs. They are not their identity, okay? Um, basically, uh, the Amish made a decision in the 1800s and the 1900s, early 1900s, especially up at the, around the Industrial Revolutionary Age, um, Revolution Age, you know, the Industrial Revolution, they made a decision to kind of keep it simple and just keep things the way they are because they saw the fast-paced world that was moving along outside of them. So what happens is they just maintain the clothes from that time period. They know how to make them. It's passed down from generation to generation how to make them. And then... They still wear them and you guys are thinking that's their religious identity when that's farthest from the truth. Some of you guys have a problem, um, you know, not you guys, your homestead homies, but people that maybe happen across the video or they see me out in public and they think that I'm making a mockery of Amish because I dress this way and I'm not Amish. Um, they also think that Amish don't agree with the clothes that I'm wearing when in fact they make my clothes and we're really good friends with them. And so I've never had a problem with any Amish person um, actually 
coming down on me about wearing these clothes, okay? Basically, um, if you were to find some research and you look around, this is just called uh, plain dressing. I'm just plain dressing, dressing plain, um, and it just keeps life really simple for me. You know, all my shirts are the same color. <laughs> I have a gray one, a couple of white ones, these tan ones, so it makes it really easy. All my pants are just pretty much exactly the same. Uh, the suspenders, pretty much exactly the same. So it's just very easy for me just to grab something and go. I don't have to worry about, oh, do I wanna wear this? I used to be really hung up on that stuff, guys, so I'm just kinda encouraging you guys. Now, I'm not saying you have to go out and dress like this or, you know, anything else. I'm just trying to give you guys um, an example and a reason behind what you see here on YouTube okay um, it was never our intention uh, to dress this way for me to dress this way and then for us to produce these videos and then kind of have some trickery going on where you think I'm Amish or Mennonite you know we're very plain about saying that we're not either and as a matter of fact you can tell by Stacy she's definitely not so we like to say I'm a little bit country and she's a little bit rock and roll <laughs> All right, so I also wanted to show you guys how easy those beds were, so stay tuned for that PDF. I'm glad we got that out of the way. We have a lot of new subscribers around here, and some of you guys know because you've been around for a while, but I just wanted to um, air that out. And then also, there are a lot of people that dress this way. Um, one of our good friends, um, actually her dad has been dressing plain for years, and no problem there. So that's basically what this is, it's just called dressing plain. Um, this isn't like an Amish identity. It's just clothes that they wear because they've been around a long time and they just maintain that from generation to generation. They have no problem making my clothes and I definitely have no problem keeping my money in my neighborhood. So hopefully that was enlightening for you guys. We'll see you guys on the next video. Hopefully this weather breaks a little bit. We got a lot of stuff going on. We're gonna get back on the solar powered workshop build. Uh, we have some more stuff going on in the garden we're gonna share with you guys. And one thing I want you guys to know before you get out of here is this channel is about the complete homestead, self-sufficient, sustainable lifestyles rainwater catchment, growing your own food, eating healthy from the garden, raising animals, low stress life, you know, just having fun, you know, kind of marching to the beat of your own drum. So if you like that kind of stuff, and maybe you happened on this video for the first time, hit that subscribe button, follow us along on our journey, and hopefully you'll pick up some hashtag nuggets along the way. We call nuggets little learning experiences that we share with you guys that we've learned. We're just trying to take some of that pain and heartache out for, from under you guys, you know, if you're on this journey, uh, so you don't make some mistakes that we made. So thanks a lot for watching the video. Really appreciate it. See you guys on the next one. Like I said, hopefully this weather breaks up and we're gonna get thank you mr. turkey perfect timing we're gonna get busy all right we'll see you guys later